Evening. May the 10th, 2018 City Council meeting is now called to order. Tonight, our invocation and pledge of allegiance will be given by Ben Andrus, Longview Police Department Chaplain. Please stand. Shall we pray together? Father, I thank you that we can come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you that we can come to you with hearts that are full of praise for all of the ways in which you have provided for us as a people, uh, as a community. I especially tonight, Father, want to give you thanks for those whom you've given as a gift to our community who serve us and protect us. I thank you for those men and women of law enforcement that even tonight, even at this moment, are on the streets serving and protecting us. They are your gift and we give you thanks for them. I thank you, Father, for those police officers uh, over the time and over even in recent days who have given their lives uh, to serve the community in which they serve and to serve us as well. We ask for your uh, continued uh, comfort and encouragement for their families and for those uh, who are, were serving alongside of them, that they too would be encouraged and strengthened. We pray, Father, that you would guide this group tonight. We thank you for each one that has been elected uh, to serve. We pray that you would give them individual and collective wisdom as they direct the affairs of the city that we have, which is also a gift from you. Thank you again, Father, for all of your precious gifts, for your life, and for the life that you give us. And we pray it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Will you join me, please, in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. We now have some election items to take care of. Ms. Shepard. Family affair. <laughs> and Kelly can stand on the left side of you so that they can get. And if you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Andy Mack. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of the mayor. The duties of the mayor. Of the city of Longview. The city of Longview. In the state of Texas. State of Texas. And will. And will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Preserve. Preserve. Protect. And protect. Defend, and defend. Constitution and laws. Constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. Help me God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Moore is next. If you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Ed Moore. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of city council. Of city council. And will. And will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Preserve. Preserve. Protect and defend. Protect and defend. The constitution and laws. The constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. you. Thank you.
I'm seeing a 90 year old move like this one. <laughs> <laughs> My young 90 year old mom. So. <laughs> I state your name. I, Nona Snotty. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of city council. Of city council. Of the city of Longview. Of the city of Longview. And the state of Texas. And the state of Texas. And will. And will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Preserve. Preserve. Protect and defend. Protect and defend. The constitution and laws. The constitution and laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the state. And of the state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Because I'm a traditionalist, counsel, would you all please take this one? Please stand in that order. Thank you all very much for that indulgence. Tonight in employee recognition, we're going to recognize Partners in Prevention. On Tuesday, May the 1st, our Partners in Prevention team was presented with the Crystal Pineapple Award from the Junior League of Longview to recognize their dedication to the Longview community in support of the Junior League. Partners in Prevention has partnered with the Junior League through a variety of programs. For three years, the Junior League Skills for Sex program matched their volunteers for the Forever Friends program through multiple activities and opportunities such as sponsoring Forever Friends, mentees at Stars Over Longview, the Youth Empowerment Seminar, and events at the League Center. Expanded opportunities provide discussion on healthy relationships, career options, plans after high school, and interviewing communication etiquette. Additionally, Partners Prevention work with the Junior League to facilitate the annual Poverty Conference, which reaches thousands of local educators, and service providers, and many League members have participated in poverty situations and simulation trainings provided by the Partners in Prevention. Also, Partners in Prevention staff served on the League's community, community Advisory Board for four years. This community collaboration between two strong, dedicated, and passionate organizations, both focused on making Longview a better place to live, is a shining example of what partners can achieve. The representatives for Partners in Prevention, please come forward. Holly Fuller, Patty Easton, Erica Castellou, Garlene Hillhouse, Jasmine Stoker, and Whitney Pierce. Crystal Pineapple. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Um, what a great group this is. What a wonderful uh, department you all are that, that provides so much for so many people in so many forms that most of us don't even recognize what you all do until it's done. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all are present in everything that we do and we thank you for the service you provide to people that uh, really need the service that only you can provide for us through our city and it's what a department what a great group that we have and it's just so wonderful to see you all up here and the things that you do and I thank you from a city standpoint from a citizen standpoint those that you make a difference you make a real difference we appreciate you very much thank you Gentlemen, Partners in Prevention, this is probably the most proactive departments we have in our community and in our, in our city. We thank you all for your proactivity. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're going we're gonna to talk about the rodeo. 
Would, would Julio Ariola come up, please? Come on, Julio. How you doing, buddy? I got Julio up here. We're going to talk about the rodeo that we just had at the PRCA, the Grayson Rotary Club. Julio, how many people do we have come to the rodeo this year? Uh, an average of about 3,500. We were rained out on Saturday night. The great, okay, we're not here to talk about the rodeo. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> we're here for community recognition. Tonight I'm recognizing Julio as our community representative from the community that does so much for our, he thought he's coming here for the rodeo. <laughs> Tell him about getting here. <laughs> because he wouldn't come here if I told him what I was doing this for. Because guys like Julio do it because they don't need recognition. They do it because it's in his heart right here. And he, he does so many things that you all will never know. But he's so involved in the rodeo, the Gregton Rotary Club. You know, he mows George Ritchie on his own time. Uh, he does things like that. Every nonprofit that needs something, Julio is there with cabinets to pitch in. He's a guy that you can call on, and he's going to get an answer every time. And Julio, that's the kind of guy we like is our community recognition because you are the man that just steps up and does what we need to do, and I appreciate you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Hold on. Thank you. I promise you he would have never come if he knew this was what it was for. <laughs> that's why I like this guy so much. Thank you, Julio. We have a couple of presentation items now. We have a proclamation commemorating National Police Memorial Day. Um, Sergeant Shane McCarter and Officer Jason Kelly, please come forward. This is a proclamation commemorating National Police Week, May 14th to the 18th, 2018. Whereas the Longview Police Department has requested the mayor by proclamation recognize May 14th to the 18th, 2018 as National Police Week in the city of Longview, whereas Congress and, pre and the President of the United States have designated the week in which May the 15th falls as National Police Week, and I further call upon all citizens of Longview to observe Tuesday, May the 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of these Longview Police Department officers who, through their courageous deeds, have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty, let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. Longview officers George Tabler, September 1886. Boyd Gaunt and B.C. Roberts, May 1948. Walter A. Connell, May 1971. Harvey L. Stevens, January 1972. Marshall Souders, Jr., November 1977. Sergeant Randy L. Davis, January 1984. Now, therefore, Andy Mack, by the authority vested me as Mayor City of Longview, proclaim May the 14th to the 18th, 2018, as National Police Week in Longview, Texas. <laughs> Gentlemen, you all represent uh, these heroes that have um, served our community and, and our um, country in, in the ultimate sacrifice and have given their lives. And, and, you would do it gladly every day because that's why you wear this uniform. That's what makes our police department so special. Uh, we have as good a public safety department anywhere in the state of Texas, and I, I'll say that to anybody anywhere because we do. They, they stick their necks out there every day for you and I so we don't have to. So I appreciate you and I applaud you, and uh, our city thanks you. Honored to stand here with you, Minnie. Thank you. Let me just stay up here. <laughs> just walking around. Now, a proclamation for Serenity Pride, the Longview Museum of Fine Arts uh, winner. Who's here with Serenity Pride? Come here, Serenity. Anybody with you? Parents? 
Come on up. This is a family affair. It's a group thing. For those of y'all don't know what we're doing, this, this, these are fun things. What, what we do, a lot of times the, the organizations in town need fundraisers, and they uh, need ways to raise money. And so I am always happy to be able to do a proclamation for someone for a day in the, in the honor of someone who wants to donate something to a nonprofit organization. So that's what we do, and I think it's a wonderful thing, and I'm glad that you all will do it, and I appreciate you all, because this is not free. Trust me, this, this is not free. So we appreciate you supporting the people that need help in our community, and do, by doing this, it's Serenity Pride Day, May the 10th, 2018. So whereas children of our most precious treasure that bring joy to our lives in immeasurable ways, and the Longview Museum of Fine Arts provide an opportunity to recognize individuals by proclamation of the city, today we celebrate Serenity Pride's birthday, her amazing kindness and her res resilience in overcoming severe dyslexia in pursuit of her dream of becoming a zoologist. So now therefore, I, Andy Mack, by the authority vested in me as Mayor of the City of Longview, proclaim May the 10th, 2018, as Serenity Pride Day in the City of Longview. Yeah. Let's get a picture. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, Andy, you want to come up here? Yes, come on up, Andy. Come on up. What a special day. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your support of the community. Thank you all. Thank you, sweetheart. Awesome. We are now to citizen comment. I had no speaker cards. Would anyone like to speak and fill out a card after the meeting? Very well. We are now to one of my favorite things that we do all year long. Mayor Max scholarship recipients. Tonight we have all four of our recipients here to read their essays and receive their awards. And I'm so incredibly honored to have been able to be a part of this again this year. Um, reading these essays is such a joy because I see, I get to see the hearts of seniors in high school. And it's so wonderful to see where those hearts are. And the most difficult thing I do all year long is decide which four people sit right there because so many of these essays are just, they're just amazing. And it, uh, it's hard to do, but these are our clear winners this year. You all were wonderful in your essays and I appreciate you being here. And so now we would like for you to come forward one at a time and read your essays for us. First off from Hallsville ISD, Brett Parks. Hello, thank y'all for your time. So I'm gonna be reading my essay that I submitted. All the time, I like to help out in the community. During football season in the fall of 2017, along with fellow teammates, I helped out an, element, an animal shelter moving dog and cat food to the shelter from Sam's Club. That really felt relieving being able to volunteer and work for that shelter. I also am in the National Honor Society where I had the opportunity to take children from North and East Elementary in Hallsville to Longview's very own mall. There, Hallsville NHS students, including me, bought the elementary students shoes and got a picture with Santa. I've been doing that for three years now and it is a great experience for both the children and the NHS students and I've also spent many hours picking up trash. That might be downtown near the golf course on Alpine and uh, near Target. And I believe that our town should be clean and I'm very thankful that it is clean as it is, as it is now. I have over 79 hours of community service and I'm proud to say that that number is still continuing to rise. And I thank you all for your consideration. <laughs> Yes, 
standing above me. No, thank you. Okay, this is for Brett. I appreciate your essay, Brett. Thanks for getting there reading that thing. Um, it's been a pr pleasure um, knowing what you have in your heart, and I thank you for your service. Thank Seventh you. teacher. Okay. Next, we have from Longview High School, Hannah Miller. Okay, I'm gonna just a little bit. Okay, hi. It's nice to be here. Um, <clears throat> so I anticipate um, contributing contributing to the community by becoming a registered nurse and serving in the pediatrics wing. Um, I will be attending UT Tyler to pursue this degree, and I'll be going into the pre-nursing program as a freshman. I, I plan on applying to the School of Nursing and Health Sciences to achieve a bachelor degree of science. After graduating this program, I'll be eligible to take the license examination to become a nurse. I first grew up at uh, First Christian Church in Longview, and I met my many families there. There was a lady named Whitney, and we were thrilled that she had told us that she was having a little girl. What she didn't know was that it was going to impact her for the rest of her life. The doctors told her that her daughter named Erilyn Faith had fluid in her brain. Soon after, she was diagnosed with a rare chromosome disease called trisomy 8 and agencies of the corpus callosum. The doctors told her that her daughter would not live and she would have to prepare herself. And two and a half years later, Erilyn, who is called Bunny, is still living and fighting to stay. Today, she is seven years old and is overcoming an obstacle every obstacle thrown her way. Watching such a beautiful young lady um, and her support her baby is truly inspiring. Bunny's nurses would comfort Whitney and would tell her to stay strong and never give up on her beautiful baby girl. This experience has led me to want to become a pediatric nurse and to help kids like Errol and Faith give their parents the same support and hope. Pediatric nurses provide health and medical care for children from birth through their late teens. Growing up in a household with a single parent has taught me how to become independent and work hard to achieve greatness. My father hasn't always been a part of my life, therefore my mom has supported three kids on a single income for almost 10 years. He has been unable to keep a steady job, therefore I had to get a job the, the summer before my junior year to help pay for my car and college classes. I work almost 25 hours a week while cheering, studying for several dual credit classes, and obtaining a 3.47 GPA. Volunteering allows you to get out and be active in the world, whether it's going out to the apartments and teaching kids Bible stories to passing out food and blankets to the homeless people, down, people downtown. Any activity will make a huge impact in the community and the lives around you. Getting involved will make you feel better about yourself and help you grow as a person throughout the community. Seeing those that are less fortunate and that do not have the same luxuries as you makes you grateful. I have done several community service activities throughout Long Beach, such as Buckner's Valentine's Party, Highway 80 can drive and coast for kids. But the one I've enjoyed the most is the buddy walk for Down syndrome. I have known Alex Max since we were babies. We did gymnastics together at a young age. She has become a sister to me. We currently have both cheer at Longview High School and there never seems to be a dull moment when she's around. She manages to make me laugh and her bubbly personality always lights up the room in an instant. Every year she asks me if I'm going to be on her team for the buddy walk and I can't imagine saying no. This has been a great opportunity to get involved in the community and celebrate joyful lives of those who have Down syndrome. I plan on coming home every year to walk with Alex as her buddy and show her love and support. Another community service activity I enjoyed doing was painting fire hydrants with the National Honor Society. We went through Longview and cleaned up and painted the old fire hydrants bright yellow to help the firefighters see them better at night. It's crazy how something so huge or small can make a huge impact in the community. I enjoy getting involved and I plan on volunteering as much as possible even when I move off to college. Thank you. What a great essay. Hannah, thank you so much for participating. And um, this is one smart girl. I should just mention my niece, Alex Mack, and she's in. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was awesome. Thank you so much. Keep it up. You'll make a great pediatric nurse.
next from Pine Tree High School, Caroline Kerfman. Hi, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. It's an honor. Um, at the age of nine, my family began taking in children through the foster care system. It was a huge life change, but at only nine years old, my brain couldn't comprehend exactly how huge of a change it would be. Growing up between two boys, I couldn't wait for the day I would get a sister. Nine years, 12 foster children, and three adoptions later, I'm blessed to be the older sister of three precious little girls. Looking back on those nine years, my life has never been the same, and I'm so thankful for that. The children that came through our home have absolutely changed my life for the better. And yes, as I'm sure you're wondering, having to give them back is extremely difficult. With each child that came and went, my heart broke a little more. However, as long as the child is safe and happy, that's all that matters. What most people don't know is that these children come from within our own neighborhoods and communities. One of our foster children even came to us from right down the street of my best friend. These children are often neglected, abused, starved, and even sold for drugs. Due to those terrible situations, most children will arrive at a foster home with a diaper and a shirt if they're lucky. These children rarely have anything to call their own. After a year or two of fostering and seeing kids come to my family with nothing, we started a nonprofit organization called Legacy Closet of Longview. Our purpose is to help foster families in surrounding areas by relieving them of any costs and providing them with things such as clothes, shoes, diapers, formula, car seats, toys, and so much more. I personally help organize and pack these bags on a regular basis, as well as making deliveries to foster families when necessary. We're able to provide for these families thanks to the donations and volunteer work of so many people in Longview and surrounding areas. Our church, Fellowship Bible Church of Longview, has helped by providing a large space for us to store our continually growing ministry. Legacy Closet has also branched out and started another organization called Christmas for the Least of These, which is similar to Legacy Closet, but only happens around Christmas. And we provide foster families with Christmas gifts for their foster kids and other children that they might not have been able to afford. Although I'm leaving for college soon and heading out of Longview, I love Longview so much, and I love being able to serve my community. As I said before, foster care has changed my life immensely. I could not be more grateful for every opportunity it's given me to love these children and serve my community in a way that I couldn't have before. Thank you, Caroline. What a wonderful testament to what we all should be doing, isn't it? We just thank you for your service. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Hill High School, Mr. Jacob Hill. I have lived in Longview my entire life. I have attended Spring Hill High School since kindergarten and will graduate this spring. I remember a Boy Scout Troop 613, which is sponsored by the First Lutheran Church in Spring Hill. As a member of Scouts, I have participated in many service projects around the city. I've helped with wheelchair ramps at Lear Park, renovated the gazebo at McGrill Plaza, installing a picnic pavilion for Highway 80 Rescue Mission, built picnic tables for several churches around town, and participating in roadside cleanups. I personally led my Eagle Scout project to combat pollution in the city by placing markers on the storm drains, asking people to refrain from dumping garbage and yard waste into our waterways. As a member of Spring Hill High School Leaders Corps, we've sold flowers to help beautify our city, as well as distributing backpack lunches for the primary and intermediate campuses, along with collecting copes for kids. Also, as a member of National Honor Society, we assisted the Asbury House with the Halloween Carnival, and we collected blankets and care packages for Highway 80 Rescue Mission. I will soon be an adult leader with Scout Troop 613, where I will help new scouts learn to become leaders in our community. What a great testament, Jacob. Thank you for serving our community the way that you do. Uh, keep up the good work, buddy. A lot, lot more ahead of you, I'm sure. Thank you so much. You can stand up here with me.
any of the families like to come up and have pictures? You're welcome to. <laughs> no, if y'all want to come up, just get in the picture. Yeah. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to take pictures? That's fine. Love for you to get in the picture, sir. Come on. Y'all come on up. Stand up with your children. Be proud. I'm proud of your children. Is all yours. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sharonda Jackson. I am assistant store manager for Walmart at 398, which is your local 4th Street. Um, when I heard about the Andy Mack scholarship last year, I was just eager to see what I can do to help you guys. So my store, along with uh, Gilmer Road and Estes Parkway, we all come together to give you guys a gift card, um, just as a congratulations, you guys keep going. You guys are starting your lives off right, like seriously. Um, I am so proud of you guys. You guys inspire me, believe it or not. I'm actually starting uh, school this fall. So just on behalf of our company, I mean, congratulations and keep going. You get in the middle when you pass them out and get a picture with you in the middle, okay? I want you all to know this young lady is probably the most persistent human <laughs> being I have ever met. Um, literally, she, okay, let's get a picture. No, you're right there. You're right there. She is so awesome. She contacts me on Facebook. I didn't contact her. And when I don't respond back, she contacts me again and again and again until she beats it into my head until the last minute when I forget to do it and she still takes care of things. So on behalf of you, sweetheart, and, and for Walmart, thank you all so much. And thank you all so much. What great community partners we have in this community. I'm so proud to be a part of uh, what's going on in Longview. <coughs> we are now to our public safety update, Chief Bishop. Mayor Matt, council members, Mr. Bonds, thanks for giving me an opportunity to give you a little update since the last time we met. Um, what, some, what some great essays that we just heard. That's very nice. Uh, one of the good things uh, that I get to do in, in my position as chief from time to time is to get to recognize our officers for some great work that they did. Uh, here recently, I just had the opportunity to uh, present Alex Chorba with the department's meritorious conduct award. And if I could just take a, a minute and kind of give you a brief synopsis of, of what uh, Officer Chorba did to receive that award. On November 26 of 2017, our officers, uh, our dispatch center received a call of a robbery that had just occurred at the Easy Mart at 1801 South High Street. Uh, the dispatchers immediately dispatched some officers uh, to that call. Uh, while the officers were en route, they heard Officer Chorba, who was off duty at the time, uh, get on the radio and uh, put himself out there at the call. Officer Chorba happened to be sitting at the intersection there at the red light, saw the individuals exiting the store, and saw the distress on the clerk's face. Uh, Officer Chorba then gave uh, pursuit in his, in his personal vehicle, uh, which then led to a short foot pursuit, and he was able to take the two subjects into custody uh, before our officers arrived. Uh, it was later found out that one of the individuals uh, was armed with a handgun uh, when they took him into custody. So I want to thank Officer Chorba for a job well done and congratulate him. 
uh, for the nomination from his peers and uh, the recognition through uh, that award with the Meritorious Conduct Award. And then another award that I was uh, able to, to give out was a D Department Civic Achievement Award, and I was able to present that to Officer Christy Bryan. Uh, Christy was nominated by her supervisor for the work that Christy has done over the years with the Women's Safety Course. Uh, we have had many, many women here in Longview take this course. It's specifically designed for women. Uh, Christy put this course together from the ground up. Uh, she started it in 2008. And this has become one of our biggest uh, attending uh, public outreaches that we do. Uh, the last class we had 36 members in there. And when the class was done, I got 36 emails about how great the course was. And I wonder how that happened. But I want to thank Christy and uh, for all the, the effort that she put into this course to um, putting information out there uh, to women on how they can uh, better uh, be safe and protect themselves. As you know, um, the last several months we've had several retirements uh, um, which have created some vacancies and ranked positions within the department. Uh, the last two months we've been going through a pretty rigorous uh, promotional process for the rank of lieutenant and the rank of sergeant. I'm proud to announce that tomorrow at two o'clock, uh, Sergeant Shane McCarter will be promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Shane currently serves as our public information officer, and we will have a promotional ceremony tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, in the municipal courtroom. We'll have two candidates that will uh, be promoted to the rank of sergeant tomorrow as well. Officer Drew Allison, and I, I debuted Drew last uh, council meeting and, and the video that we had uh, prepared. And Drew finished first on the sergeant's process, and he'll be uh, promoted to sergeant tomorrow at 2 p.m. as well in the courtroom. And then our second candidate for uh, promotion to sergeant is Officer Jerry Higginbotham. Uh, he currently serves as a traffic officer and our traffic division so he's going to have to come off the motorcycle and back into a car as a first line supervisor so uh, i want to congratulate all three of them on a job well done and i look forward to promoting them tomorrow and if you're available we'd like to have you have you stop by uh summertime's coming up uh children will be out of school shortly we're getting ready to kick off one of our first uh, summer camps that we have. It's our police explorer camp. Uh, anyone that might be interested in police work or our police explorer program will have a, a special four-day camp from June 18th through June 21st. that will be held out at Spring Hill Junior High School. Um, we do charge a $30 charge for this, but lunch will be provided and we'll provide them with a t-shirt at the completion of the camp. But uh, if we have any students out there that are interested in law enforcement, want to see a little bit more about what all is entailed, uh, we'd encourage them to um, to uh, contact the police department and um, and sign up for this this course. And then, Mayor, thanks for reading that proclamation tonight. Uh, as you said, next week is uh, Police Memorial Week, and on Tuesday night, the 15th, we'll have the opportunity to. Uh, recognize the officers, all the officers in Gregg County uh, for the job that they've done for the year, but also pay tribute to those officers in Gregg County too that have uh, given their lives in the line of duty. So uh, we'd love to have you, uh, have anybody that, that's interested in coming, uh, can contact Karen Grisham for tickets at 237-1100 uh, and the ticket price is $15 and we still have some available. So I'll answer any questions. Any questions, Chief Bishop? Chief, thank you. And, I, and that the, the Johnson Law Enforcement is a wonderful banquet to attend. If you haven't attended it, you should because it's just a tribute to our men and women that put their lives on the line every day for us. I enjoy it every year. Unfortunately, I'll be out of town on Tuesday, so I won't be there. But um, my thoughts and hearts will be with you guys, and thank you for all that you do, Chief. Good. Thank, thank you. you, sir. We have a consent agenda? Yes. Any items Council Light pulled off for separate discussion? If not, is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
zoning. Public hearing to re hear application S18-01. Uh, Ms. Choi. Thank you, Mayor Mack, members of council, and Mr. Bonds. Uh, the applicant is requesting a specific use permit for a restaurant with a drive through window in general retail zoning district. A specific use permit is required for a drive through window within uh, general retail zoning district to ensure no negative impact on surrounding properties. Uh, this property, um, if you remember, used to be a Cajun steamer. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, along with staff, recommends approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. This does require a public hearing, which is now open. Any comments on this issue? Public hearing is now closed. Move uh, to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing, to consider application S18-02. Um, Ms. Choi. Thank you, Mayor Mack. Um, the applicant is requesting a specific use permit for a uh, gas station with a drive through window in general retail zoning district. Um, as stated before, a specific use permit is required for a drive through window in general retail zoning di district to ensure no negative impact on surrounding properties. Uh, the applicant has indicated that the drive through window will be for the sale of alcoholic beverages, prepackaged foods, uh, hot foods, um, and other items. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, along with staff, recommends approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. This also requires a public hearing, which is now open. Any discussion? Any questions, Ms. Choi? Public hearing is now closed. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing application H18-01. Ms. Choi. Thank you, Mayor Mack. Uh, the applicant uh, is Alton Plaza LLC. Uh, they are requesting a local historic landmark designation for uh, the petroleum building. Um, if this is approved, this will be Longview's six uh, local landmark. Uh, this building is located at the southeast corner of Fredonia and Whaley Street, addressed as 202 East Whaley. Uh, this building would be a p positive adaptive reuse of this building. The developers of this property are proposing to convert this building into an apartment complex. Uh, the Petroleum Building is a five-story building originally constructed as a downtown auto park as seen as the, uh, in this picture provided by Mr. Uh, Andy Curry. Um, it was a parking garage built in 1953. The structure was so sold to Earl Hollinsworth and Lee Travis in 1954. Uh, Earl Hollinsworth and Lee Travis were two influential East Texas businessmen who developed their, their drilling company, Hollinsworth Drilling Company, into one of the largest such companies in the Southwest region. Uh, in 1956, this building was converted into an office building. At this time, the building housed a coffee shop and jewelry store on the ground level, um, and offices were installed on the upper levels. Uh, this building was occupied until 19, around the 1970s. Uh, this building is a noted modern movement, uh, movement architectural product of the Texas architectural firm of Wilson, Morris, Crane, and Anderson. Notable partner of this firm was local architect B.W. Crane, who built many buildings in Longview, Texas. Uh, due to its historical, economic, architectural, and cultural significance, staff, along with the Planning and Zoning Commission and Historic Preservation Commission, recommends approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. This does require public hearing, which is now open. Any questions? Public hearing is now closed. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're now to action item. Consider a resolution appointing the mayor pro tem. This year, um, first I would like to say thank you to Ms. Snotty for being our mayor pro tem for the last year. You've done a wonderful job, uh, Ms. Nona, in everything that I've asked you to do, and you've always been there. And I appreciate that, as, as all of you all have who have served in that capacity. Uh, this year, we will ask uh, to appoint uh, Mr. David Wright as our mayor pro tem. So if there's no discussion, is there a motion? So moved. Second? Aye. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Wright, for agreeing to be our mayor pro tem. Look forward to working with you again this year. We are now to items of community interest. Mr. Moore. Uh, it's been an honor to uh, serve the residents of District 1 for the last three years, and I thank you for the confidence you've placed in me to serve you for these next three years. 
Uh, second, a number of us had the opportunity to attend the National Day of Prayer out at the uh, East Texas Christian School. And I just wanted to thank uh, Ms. Russell's fifth grade class for adopting me as their community leader. And I would like to thank uh, Brianna, Devin, Gideon, Hunter, Judah, <laughs> Landon, and Savannah for praying for me Amen. throughout the year. <laughs> Lord, I needed it. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Moore. Ms. Snotty. Yes, I'd like to say thank you to, oh, my family's all gone, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I too am honored uh, and want to uh, be grateful for having the opportunity to serve the D2 community another three years for another term. So I'm grateful as well. Thank you. Mr. Wade. Yes. Uh, just wanted to say thank you to everyone who came out to the town meeting on uh, May 3rd. It was a really great turnout. Um, the participation of everyone that came, um, city staff, employees, Everyone, Mr. Bonds, thank you guys for coming out and being supportive that day. Councilman Snotty, Councilwoman Snotty as well. Um, that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ishihara. Yeah, <coughs> Mr. Wright. Nothing tonight, sir. Mr. Pirtle. Mr. Bonds. <coughs> okay. Our summer reading club encourages kids to keep reading throughout the summer, and, in, and, in, and it is a way for them to have tons of fun. Come to the library to sign up or register online at longviewtexas.gov gov slash s r c our longview fire department and partners of prevention invite students from longview and surrounding areas to participate in the heroes of tomorrow summer camp also called hot camp this one day camp provides fun hands-on experience introducing area youth to career opportunities within the longview fire department such as water and high angle rescue fire hazmat and emergency medical services registration for the hot camp is underway at longviewtexas.gov slash hot camp or by calling 903-237-1119 our Longview Parks and Rec is now registering for summer learn to swim classes. They offer private, semi-private, and group classes for ages six months to adults. Learn more at longviewtexas.gov slash LTS or call 903-237-1270. We have a number of upcoming events uh, that are happening in our community. Junking in the Pine Spring Sale is May the 11th and 12th off of FM 2000 or 2011 near Gregg County Airport. Make plans to see Longview's uh, Theater, Longview's new play, The Foreigner. Performance dates are May 17th through the 20th at Grace Crossing Methodist Church. Come see the Gala of Royal Horses at the Longview Rodeo Arena on Saturday, May the 19th or Sunday, May the 20th. For more information on any of these events, please check out the calendar or visit longviewtexas.com or city events, visit longviewtexas.gov slash calendar. Okay, survey time. Boy. Did we hit the home run on the survey this week? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know if it was a home run. It was a, it was a very active survey, probably for sure our most active survey of the year. Probably the second most active survey we've ever had, um, which was really good to hear input from the community. Um, although some of the comments which we received well over 500 comments about this question. Some of them got a little bit off task, what the question originally was intended to say, but it did spur on some really good conversation and insight into where people's thoughts and ideas are. So the question was, do you feel that crime would increase or decrease if some of the motels on Highway 80 were closed? Well, 92% said decrease, 8% said increase, which is what you would assume would be said. The dialogue from this has really stemmed a lot of cre creative and critical thinking on my part to look into seeing what, what we are doing and how we're doing it. And you know, Mr. Bonds has been very helpful with me in this process. This is not just a random question. We have been working on this for a while to see where we are. This kind of go along, goes along with our Homeless Task Force initiative that we have uh, taken in. And I think we're gonna see some very positive things come from this discussion. And some of the biggest concerns were, first of all, thinking that w we are dictators of business and we're not as government. That's not what we do. We don't tell people what to do. We enforce rules, regulations, and ordinances for not just business on Highway 80, but every business in town. Your business is my businesses, and no matter where you are in Longview, we're, that's our job is to enforce ordinances and rules and laws. And wherever there's criminal activity going on, it's our job to 
curtail that criminal activity. At whatever the cost, that's what we are to do as uh, providers of public safety for our community. That's the primary role of the city government is public safety. So we will continue to look into this to see how we can make an impact on our community and see where this leads us. But I appreciate Mr. Bonds and his help with, with looking into opportunities for us as a city to grow, to grow in all respects, leaving no one out and not doing this anything to hurt people. This is a helpful thing when we do things, when we're um, upholding laws and ordinances and rules and regulations. Those are things that are protection for our community and that's what our job is as public servants. So, uh, but thank you for all the insight and all the comments. And uh, you know, when we have that much dialogue on one simple one line question, it means people are, are interested. And so when people are interested, it's our job to take note of that. And so we certainly will. So I appreciate that. For fun, okay, this is probably the funniest question, I've, not the funniest question we're asked, but the funniest response I have ever received. And it's the other category I'm talking about. Um, if you're going to a beach, what would you take if you only take three items? Okay, sunscreen, sunglasses, swimsuit, that was 44%. Flip flop, swimsuit, toothbrushes, 31%. Sun hat, sunscreen, radio, 10%. Other, 15%. And I would love to read you those <laughs> others. Because it goes everywhere from crab boils to crawfish stuff to fishing stuff to beer to a girlfriend, not my wife. Um, it went all over the place. It was very entertaining. So I appreciate the humor. You know, it's nice when we can laugh a little bit and we can enjoy things in the midst of things that are going on in the community. And it's fun to have a question where people can kind of uh, play a little bit. So I appreciate everybody that took the survey. I know I enjoyed it. Um, I read every single one of those other comments because it does make me, it does make me laugh a lot. Um, I would like to say two quick things, then we'll close up. First off, I want to make note and thank the board of directors at LEADCO for their uh, vote to fund the East Texas Advanced Manufacturing Academy here in the community for a million dollars. That will go a long way to help this academy get started. This academy will change the lives of our kids that live in our community and all around our community, all in the East Texas area. And I appreciate their foresight and their, um, um, their thought process. It was, a, it was a long process. It was a meeting that was filled with discussion. But in the end, I think the right decision is made and I think this should move forward and hopefully at breakneck speed. We hope to start this academy as early as this August enrolling children from uh, children, uh, kids. They are children to me, he's my age now, uh, from the high schools and started in this fall. And so I see that as a really uh, positive program that we will grow upon and we will see generational changes in our community. So I look forward to that. That's an economic development tool. It's a quality of life tool. It's a life tool for some of these kids. It is life for some of them. So um, I appreciate it and I appreciate Ledco's uh, board of directors for acting as they did. I'd also like to thank Ms. Ishihara. I failed to mention her tonight because part of that scholarship that was given tonight was because she donates her stipend that we receive up here as well to add to that scholarship. So she took that to a $2,000 per person scholarship this year instead of 1250 and I know that's uh, very nice for you to do that and it's appreciative of these kids and I hope they'll use those scholarships to further education. Um, the last thing I'll say is it's an honor to be here with you council members. Um, it's an honor to be the mayor of this city. I don't take it lightly, I take it as a, as a pleasure, a privilege, and I appreciate you having trust in me to give me three more years, and I look forward to serving you with uh, integrity, with honesty, with transparency, and I look forward to uh, our city continuing to grow as it has over the last three years. So thank you very much, and thank you, council members. This meeting is adjourned.